We got another YouTuber out here. Yeah, what's going on? Tell us your name and your channel. Okay, um, I'm Ted with uh, Clef's Garage. We're out in uh, Ohio. Okay. This is the, the YouTube channel. Um, so there it is. You guys should check it out. We're going to do some coverage on this wagon reunion. Part two of the Clam Fest All GM Car Show. Calling this the largest known gathering of 1971 to 76 GM cars. This morning I walked around the sedan rows. That was the part one video. Many beautiful survivor cars out there. And now we're gonna check out these station wagons. This is the GM clamshell wagon show in Minnesota this year. They did one last year in Ohio. So it's just a good chance for people from all around that are into these cars to come get to see a lot of them in one place. The market's pretty strong on these cars and so Part of the reason for that is that there's just fairly low survival of them. They're honestly rarer than Corvettes or Cutlasses or GTOs or 442s. So to have this many in one place for a gathering, especially since they're pushing half a century old now, is pretty, pretty unique type of event to run across so I drove all the way up to southern Minnesota to see the spectacle kind of a once in a lifetime event so right here we've got the 71 Kingswood this is roughly based on an Impala Chevrolet did that starting basically back in the late 50s they would have a different station wagon model name that corresponded with the regular Biscayne, Bel Air, Caprice, Impala. So the 71 is fairly odd, jade green metallic. You don't see that color very often. These are Put just to show the year progression of Chevrolets, you got the 72 Townsman, another 73 Kingswood, 74 Bel Air, and then the 75 and 76 Caprice. The Townsman, I believe, was based on the Bel Air model. So it's got the Smooth vinyl seats. You can see the Impala's had the perforated vinyl seats. This one is optioned with a roof rack. Of course, your Bel Air series or Biscayne series, you could get the little pie pan dog dish hub caps there, which it's got. The 73 has been repainted. You can see the Impala emblems there on the quarter. So 72 and 73 was when they made the change. So your 73 Impala model without the wood grain, your Caprice Estate with the wood grain. This is a bit of an oddball because it is a two-tone car. It's got that little specific trim molding you could get vinyl tops available on these cars also I think there's a couple out here with tops on them most were single paint color see occasional two tones this one has the original accessory front bumper guards and the 74 Bel Air. This one wears its original paint. 
and it is a 454 car and that is the original engine you can see the little emission sticker there is original to the car pretty rare option for a base model to have the big engine like that then we've got the 75 Chevy Impala pretty clean survivor there cream with the brown interior pretty basic option car then your 76 Caprice Estate Seventy six is considered one of the height of styling of one of these because you got the square headlights with the wood grain. So among the collectors, Caprice Estate, very, very desirable car. This one's got your third seat. This one does have kind of a tweed in it and these guys drove down from Illinois and they're 73 this one's got Impala badges on it too I'm not exactly super up on the name switch on these but i think halfway through they did just revert to impala and caprice name plates this is a very very pristine restoration on there with the matching matching piece really fun show you get a lot of the passionate people that are into these cars that see old friends there is really a camaraderie with these wagons you see a lot of guys that kind of pass them between friends when they sell them so being able to own one of the few of these vehicles that do remain is a badge of honor and a responsibility for caretaking Seventy four Impala wagon, very, very clean car, well preserved, and seventy six Impala. This is one that has seen its share of hard knocks, but they've kept it going. little bit reminds you of a Cuban car where they just take whatever's around and keep it fixed up and keep it going the 72 Kingswood is repainted in non-original color things never change Get more gray hair, right, Danny? Let me know when you want to come back fishing this summer. 72. It's when they really favored these rubber impact strips on the bumpers. Although they're fairly uncommon on GM. Impalas. But across the line, <laughs> see quite a lot of them. So this old car, 71 Kingswood, it had been driven 43,000 miles, and then it was in a collision with the mailbox, got the door, 
and the windshield. And after that collision, they parked the car, never drove it again, and it was preserved exactly like you see it put away. This one is for sale. Asking price was 10000 on it, which for where these cars are at, realistically, is not too bad of a price. It's a bit of a time capsule. And right here is a 76 Caprice. Impala? Did they just swap the grill out or? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's been. Been spruced up with Caprice grill. It's got a repaint on it. Yeah, you can see the Impala door panels there. Yeah. You got the old gauge on there, the old motor minder. Oh yeah, Good vacuum. Gas mileage, bad gas mileage. Yep. Lord knows they're great on gas. Yeah, these cars are great on gas. You need a you need a gauge to tell you how good on gas they are, right? <laughs> All right, yeah, she's a work in progress halfway through the restoration here. Keeping, keeping it on the road. Oh yeah, so power tour. Power tour, check it out. It's very awesome. I took my wagon in 2015. Wow. Super cool. That's a once in a lifetime experience. It really is, and it is great for yeah. kids, everything. Bring back some memories. So many cars to look at. It's just great, great menu, great time. I was looking for something, but all right, I'll just take that nope. beautiful awesome cruising 90 deal. in a station wagon. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys and trying to race Hellcats and having fun at the same time. Oh, yeah. I kept telling them on three, we're going, and they started to laugh. Wow. How many miles was that trip? I didn't do the whole thing. Yeah, they kind of do between cities so you can catch a lag of it as the yeah. premise. Yeah. yeah. So I think I did two or three venues. It's probably yeah. 3,000 miles. Wow. That's pretty good. She's a reliable, it really is. reliable car. It's a great right? car. Awesome. Yeah. And I keep driving it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you. Sharing the story. <laughs> Work in progress. <laughs> 76 Pontiac Safari. Grand Safari. I believe in the catalog, the regular Safari was the A body Le Mans wagon, and the Grand Safari was the big. Clamshell style. Silver paint. This old silver lacquer has a pretty terrible ability to withstand UV, so this is actually relatively decent compared to how you see some of them. But people like them patinaed down now. Pretty well kept car. Vinyl interior tilt column. This one's a 74 Pontiac Grand Safari. Got the wood grain. This one has the bit of a houndstooth tweed, the center armrest. Third seat also. Yeah, 
And we run into another YouTuber. What's up, Tim? How's it going? Good. Met Tell everybody what your channel is. Okay, my channel is Jerry Jr.'s Garage. And right now I'm live. I'm doing kind of an impromptu. Awesome. Uh, quick. All right, quick well, I won't hold you up. Oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> and your channel? Mr. Mr. Good Pliers. Yeah, check him out. He's got all sorts of cool videos. Tons of subscribers, too. 76 olds. The custom cruiser body was based on the 98. So those fender skirts and the design of the taillights were shared with the 98s. A lot of things are different. Your rear bumper, obviously the quarter panels themselves, marker lights, things like that. Out of all the brands, I think Oldsmobile probably is my favorite. Just really like the look of these. Chevrolet would be a close second. See very, very few Buicks here. I think there's that blue 73, and that's about it for Buicks. Over on the table there, they did have a paper where they showed the production breakdowns, where they showed each year which of these vehicles and the specific models they made and how many. And just for comparison purposes, I want to say there was around like 15,000 Chevy Nomads made and they're considered rare collector cars. So you do the math of how many of these things are left after decades of being scrapped and derbied and you see definitely why they are the fast and up and coming appreciating collector value vehicles that they are. We got another YouTuber out here. Yeah, what's going on? Tell us your name and your channel. Okay, um, I'm Ted with uh, Clef's Garage. We're out in uh, Ohio. Okay. This is the, the YouTube channel. Um, so there it is. You guys check it out. We're going to do some coverage on this wagon reunion. and. Uh, All right. You should check it out. We've got like 50 other videos on there, so be sure to like, comment, okay. subscribe. Or, uh, yeah, if you guys like this type of stuff and you like car shows and you like seeing what other car guys are doing on youtube definitely go check out ted and yeah, go see Clep's garage and see what they got going on a little bit of everything so yeah it'll be a good little be a good show today We're yeah have a lot of fun so i'm gonna do some drone work with my drone and uh, all right a couple guys are leaving so i want to get that done before they head out all right let you get to it good to meet you ted good to meet you. check out Clep's garage on youtube Give them some love. So here we've got the 76 as well, custom cruiser. Got the big square headlights. This one's a two-tone with the white roof. Beautiful, beautiful cars blue vinyl interior in that so somebody has put big wheels on this got the 73 Impala here it's kind of a beige with a black interior See the Impala badging there on the back quarter panel. So 73 must have been the year they started to really denote them just along the lines of what they were, rather than with the extra Kingswood name.
There's another one that I believe was brought from Wisconsin. Two-tone car, dark green interior, perforated vinyl. There's different styles of gates on these cars. I believe the manual gate had this handhold. And then there's a different type of switch. The one with the little finger latches. One's power and one's not. So basically the premise of the clamshell wagon is the back glass retracts up into the roof. The tailgate retracts down into the floor, and you can get in and out without having to trip over it, hit stuff on it, bump your head, whatever. So, very revolutionary design of these cars. GM and the catalog, I believe, called this tailgate design the Glide Away. So, we've kind of adjusted our nomenclature over the years they call it clamshell or round back or whatever other terms that people know these cars by so one of the really rare and well presented vehicles here is this 75 caprice estate very very original car got the original paint interior is just kept in very fastidious order almost new condition quick look at the front of this 75 beautiful beautiful car among the collectors of these cars, this is probably about as holy grail as it gets. Take a quick look under the hood here. 400 small block. This presented very, very fresh and clean and well preserved and we've got the 74 Impala just a decent old survivor car some people kind of love this color and some people hate it to me it's just kind of odd it's the color that's not a color it's not mint green it's not yellow it's not gray it's just that color you have to see it in person to <laughs> really grasp what it is and this pontiac is going to be 75. that's a really neat car brown Pretty common to 70s cars, your greens and your browns. A lot of families grew up in these cars and have fond memories of them now. Out here, this is a 74 Caprice Estate. Pretty rare color combination on this. Got the burnt orange color. And it's two-toned with black. Very, very uncommon color. Most of your people ordering a two-tone would pick a lighter color for the roof to keep them cool. It's got a great look with that color on it though. Probably about the only car in this configuration still in existence. 
just a very very rare 74 and all the better being a caprice with the wood grain sides black interior the perforated vinyl beautiful car overall So right here we've got the, I believe it's a 72, it's a Pontiac Safari Wagon, really neat colors on this one, got your dark green metallic with the wood grain, dark green interior with the third seat. Honest old survivor car, not perfect, just worn around the edges enough that you wouldn't be scared to use it and have fun with it and enjoy it. This one is listed for sale also. And over here, 74 Impala. Pretty clean Survivor as well. Oh, I see now 75. 75 borrowed a lot of the previous year Caprice grill and front end parts. Smooth roof, no rack. Very, very pristine, well presented survivor car there. Then we've got the 73 Caprice Estate. There were two different yellows at least that year. This is the lighter color. They also had another darker, it was more of like the yellow ochre that was on the trucks. I don't know if it was the exact shade, but it was closer to that. This is more your cream yellow here. And this one, just an old survivor car. Pretty desirable aesthetic. The wood grain, the roof rack on it. Got the tan interior. So here we've got the 73 Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser. Paint's a little tired on this one. It's the way these old lacquers are. But still very Honest, original, well-kept survivor car. Then over here we've got the 73 Buick Estate Wagon. Dark blue. This has been repainted because it's got the base coat, clear coat. Original was just a straight lacquer. And it is, I think, the only Buick here. Show all the way around it. These cars, I mean, they really are works of art. Seventy six Caprice. This one unfortunately has had a lot of Minnesota winners on it, but it's still a very desirable car. The wood grain, the third seat, the roof rack. You can see that interesting tweed that these had. 
76 with the square headlights. So here's a 76 Impala. Next to it, you can see that front end is quite different, but quite similar at the same time. It's a fairly standard model with your vinyl interior, no wood grain. Another 76. I was talking to the owner of this one a little bit and it is a pretty well optioned car. This one's been preserved in very pristine condition until somebody really took care of it. It's a beautiful survivor inside and out. And here we've got another 76 Caprice Estate. Pretty rare old survivor. It's had a lot of repairs and upkeep done on it. The AC still works. Fantastic old car. Then the 71 Olds Custom Cruiser, white with the wood grain. This one is Kleps Garage. Unique factory hubcaps on there. I think we're 71 only. Could have used them into 72, but I think that's one year only cap that it wears. It's just a good, clean, old survivor car. Top to bottom. There you can see the look in the back with the gates rolled down into the bottom and the glass is rolled down the top of the roof there's one leaving this is kind of a special row here this is a fully restored 72 so you got the brown vinyl in it with the third seat. 72 was the last year of that Kingswood moniker and I believe the estate was only the wood grain which makes you think this one might have been something that when they did the repaint they didn't put the trim back on but who knows. See, they did have the matching call out on the steering wheel horn button as well. It's got the optional front bumper guards. It does have the Caprice grills, which probably more than likely that one was born as a wood grain car. And this one, I can't remember what they said, but they had had some special high performance engine in there. There's Mopar leaving. Then this car here is a movie vehicle. This is the actual screen used car in Friday Night Lights. So if you've seen the movie, this should bring back some memories. So I'll give a quick look here at the little plastic license plate. In the prop shops, they actually have a plate maker. 
So this is a piece of plastic and they put out the letters, they heat them up and then that plastic melts over the letters just enough to get the shape. They take it off, it cools, they put the stickers on and that's what makes any plate for these prop cars for TV and film. So you can see this thing's just pretty well as it appeared in the movie. One more prop plate there. May have weathered a little bit since then, but it's still holding its own as a piece of film history. So right here, this 76 Caprice, beautiful survivor car. I think he was saying it came from out west and it was a lady that was like 96 that had this and they were selling it her estate and basically used the car very little and that's how it stayed in such good condition also a third seat car just very very pristine well-preserved survivor And another pristine, preserved survivor next to it is the 72 Kingswood. The family that bought this car new only used it to take on vacations. And then the rest of the year it was parked. They had another one that they drove for all their regular daily, yearly usage. So this one the mileage is original on it. Showing just a hair over 21,000. And this car, you poke in here and it still smells like 1972 inside this car. Just a fresh, preserved, pristine, beautiful Example, you look at the lacquer paint on there. And this type of car, just one that you don't ever find like this. Original tires on it. So these are the L7815 custom power cushion poly glass Goodyear's. Original bias plies from the assembly line. Got the accessory bumper guards. You can still see all the original assembly line chalk markings. Another very, very odd feature of this car is that it does not have factory air conditioning. Just about all of these that they built were AC cars. And this one was ordered without it. Which being up this far north is really not all that uncommon. And out here we've got the 74 Impala. Look for this on a upcoming Netflix series. They shipped it to Canada for filming. It's got the big block in there. Somebody's given an awful, awful lot of work and care to make this one beautiful and keep it that way. Thank everyone for watching. 
And if you happen to be watching and you're one who brought a car to this event, thank you so, so much for being a part of the gathering. This was a truly incredible gathering of these excellent Survivor cars. They had fairly low production rate to begin with, and survival is very, very thin. There's just been a lot of years of wrecks and floods and demo derbies and reasons for these cars to no longer be on the road. And a lot of them have gone to the great junkyard in the sky. So for everyone here that represents a preserved survivor example, it's just a testament to fate as well as careful ownership and some foresight that these are still on the road and still with us. The more I looked over these cars, I just got a sense of how unique and how special they are and the importance of preserving all of the ones left that are still around. I really enjoyed getting to meet new friends out here. This is a great gathering of people who have a common interest and a common love for these cars. This is the second annual Clam Fest, and that begs the question that there probably will be a third. So they kind of move around for the hosting of these, and the next one could be in a location near you. So if I get the details next year, I'll try and keep an eye out for that. The Glideaway Clamshell Tailgate truly was a unique feature, unique innovation, and a significant note in our country's transportation history. As I was looking over these cars at the show, it definitely made me miss my 1973 Caprice, and I was determined that I will find another one someday. I remain on the hunt and on the lookout for one of these rare cars, and with a little bit of determination and a little bit of luck, and perhaps a little help from anyone watching here, I hope to turn one up soon. The other hidden jewels of the show were getting to meet the YouTubers, Jerry Jr. and Ted from Klepp's Garage. Be sure to go check him out here on YouTube, and you might just see a little bit more footage of his fine 1971 Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser.